Thanks for the introduction, Joy. Organizations like AEYC are near and dear to my heart. When Deborah and I were looking for quality child care after Jacob was born, I remember talking with early childhood educators. You have the most important job in the world, inspiring our young children and motiva motivating them to learn and to be leaders. We all remember pivotal points in our educational experience, the teachers who made the difference. A standout for me was Ms. Clausen. I can tell you, Ms. Clausen looked at me in the back of the classroom and wondered what I was up to every day, but she inspired me to be a small business person with some of the work I did making jewelry. She let me just do it, and today I'm a small business person because of her inspiration she gave me. Like Ms. Clausen, each of you will make a lasting impression and affect the future. As the father of a young child, I'm witnessing firsthand the impact of early impressions. Those formative years when our kids develop a curiosity about the world and want to learn. They are at a time when we can nurture creativity and guide interest. I did my first science project determining whether um, frozen I orange juice or frozen water ice would melt faster. But definitely going to the ice caves at Mendenhall Glacier with my family, feeling the ice, feeling how smooth it was, watching the streams rush by, trying to <laughs> pry big gold nuggets out of quartz boulders, picking up all the little seed garnets off the ground and putting them in a film canister to take home. I remember visiting the Bay lab and looking in the tanks and watching an octopus move around on a tarp on land. I recall being fascinated by a biologist who came to our classroom and dissected a salmon right in front of us. I remember really enjoying a field trip to the Bill Ray Center where we built towers out of straws competitively in groups. And I recall knowing that there was a bridge building competition somewhere over in high school land and thinking it was about the coolest thing ever, but never getting my hands on some balsa wood. Every year our teacher would take us um, to um, the beach walk during Sea Week and they would take us to look at um, the tide pools and during low tide. And I always had a lot of fun doing that and while we were doing that they would teach us about like the habitats of the different animals that we saw. There was this cute boy in my class, his name was Eric, he was six years old, and he thought he could do better at math than me, and so we were in this fierce competition to be the best in the class at math. Going to the beach and looking at the tidal pools during sea week when I was in elementary school, always fun to go out to the beach and check out the ocean and all the creatures. I've always liked science, interesting, not really the class, but... Uh... Um, definitely, definitely like being out there and seeing the stuff for myself. My parents would give me a simple game of doubling numbers when I was probably four or five years old. And the game simply was to start with the number two and double it. Sea Week, um, as an elementary and middle school student being taken to the NOAA facilities to check out the sea critters and also to a lot of the local beaches at low tide to do some tide pooling. Some of my earliest memories around science were based on being outside. I went on field trips with classes to Outer Point where we looked at tide pools. We went to Cope Park and we looked at the nature around there. And I remember specifically in third grade doing a study on why leaves change colors. And we had to go out from Harborview over to the graveyard to look at the leaves every day for a couple weeks. I'm going to the Marine Hatfield Science Center on the Oregon coast there and dissecting squid in fourth grade and thinking it was really gross, but also thinking how awesome it was. My teacher was Mrs. Fagnett. Hi, Mrs. Fagnett. I loved the Montessori program at Harborview Elementary with Rick and Chris Trostel. Linda Torgerson and Lynette Ensor um, encouraged me very much to, to wonder about the natural world and explore our Juno surroundings here. Well, my friend, he's a really good friend. His name is Johnny. He inspired me because he would like, last year he would come back from Lego Robotics and he would say, 
oh, that this was fun. It's really fun because you get to program, you get to make robots go everywhere, you get to do special events, and so he inspired me a lot. Sue Baxter uh, at uh, Harborview Elementary School really pushed me in mathematics. I also really enjoyed having Mr. Dietrich and Mrs. Baxter. Hi, Mrs. B. Uh, I would have to say an educator that really made a difference in terms of science from when I was uh, a kid was um, just everyone that was working at Discovery Southeast because I just, I have good memories of them coming into the classrooms and, uh, you know, bringing us out, bringing us out on, you know, small hikes and walks and getting us to do uh, pretty cool things in nature and really appreciating everything that we had around us. Debbie Fagnett. She was my kindergarten, first grade, and second grade teacher at Capitol School. I had Mrs. Myers as Mrs. Myers as my third grade math teacher, and I still remember her sitting down with me and showing me how easy long division was. And because she made it look so easy, it just had to be easy. And from then on, I had absolutely no problems doing it. And my love of math and numbers has continued for a lifetime. And then in high school, Clay Good and his oceanography class definitely inspired me to uh, pursue a career in earth sciences. 18 years later, and Miss Baxter can still give me homework assignments. But the main thing I like about science is the newness of it. It was so cool. Montessori was really interdisciplinary. You know, the subjects were all very interconnected, and I just remember our classroom was really just overflowing with all kinds of cool specimens, objects to play with, and, you know, we were encouraged to do that and to explore. I still remember the day where the, my, my math worksheet she was having me work on that day went from pluses to multiplication signs, and I felt like the whole world had opened up to me. It was it was very exciting and and she made it she she always paid attention to where we were and made sure that we were at our level and we were having fun and really setting the stage for just doing well in school and, and loving things like math. One of the most things that I, that I really liked as a kid was uh, Legos. You program these robots and you learn a you do these challenges like what would you do for like so this year's challenge was nature's fury and then once we get all the set up we go onto a computer and we program what the robot we do and in third grade we had a whole bunch of salmon eggs that we raised and then eventually released into the local watershed. I'm a medical student and pursuing my degree and I'm really excited by the fact that now I'm no longer learning so much about nature, I'm learning a lot more about how this how the body works and why it works and I think that all roots back to my early interest in the the enjoyment of figuring out why things are the way they are and a lot of that had to do with science. Several years ago I worked for for a couple of years for a small engineering firm in Colorado. What I liked most about it was that my, bra my brain was boiling out of my skull. I really was challenged at all times. What I loved most is um, I got to find out a bunch of new things that I didn't know before, and uh, that happened almost every day, um, ex cutting into fish and whatnot. It was just really interesting to me, and that's what I loved most is um, having my brain filled with a lot more knowledge every day. But I, I love data. I love working with data. And nothing makes me happier than getting a big pile of numbers of data and using statistical means and economic tools to try to determine what those numbers really mean and that the story that they're telling about our community and, and how much money is coming into our community and how much more could be coming in if we if we did something a little bit differently. The hands-on stuff was the biggest thing for me. When you're with your friends having a good time, being creative and solving problems, there's no end to the fun you can have and the cool things you can come up with.
when I most enjoyed science was when it was interactive. I think going outside and getting, really having those hands-on experiences uh, and field trips really help kids get that direct impact of how they can make a difference. And teach them how to do something like an experiment or just let them have fun with it for a while and then you can start having them like to do robotics or stuff like that. I think the key is enthusiasm teaching through games, and making connections to the world that we live in. Get them outdoors. Take them on more field trips. Um, go to the beaches at low tide. Go up to Coat Park. And just hike around with the students and really get them involved in interacting with the, with the local natural world here. I can't recommend highly enough the value of uh, not only field trips, but also just hands-on projects, whether you're building things or creating things or wondering how they work and why they work by looking inside them or taking apart a keyboard to figuring out how all those wires cross and what they all do. I think things like that were really valuable and made me really curious and engaged in science from an early age. Make research awesome and important, and don't stand for it when your gentle brainy types are made fun of for applying themselves, because they'll remember that they're made f f to feel bad every time they execute a good project. It's as important to inspire drive in kids as it is not to crush the drive that's already there. Well, I think it's very important for in elementary school for girls to have great role models and to really become very passionate about what they're doing so that those social pressures that come on in those later years don't have the power to deter them from what they really love and what they really want to do with their lives. I would say to expose them and when I say expose them, um, show them what real biologists do. Like for me when I went on the field trip to NOAA, it really opened my eyes and I think that people should allow kids to experience that at, at a younger age so they can realize if they really like the field or not and it's just really fascinating to see grown-ups working with materials like that and I just think that um, if they experience something like that at an earlier age it'll help them discover new things. Uh, learning is much better and easier for all of us if it's fun. Um, if I have any advice for teachers trying to get kids involved in science I would definitely recommend bringing them out into uh, into nature, you know, going to the beach, going to the forest, going to the mountains, going to the glaciers, whatever you have around you, and utilizing those resources because it's so much better when you're experiencing it in person. Little kids are obviously natural scientists. They're so curious about the world. Just keep kids passionate, whatever that takes. Um, the best part of working in science for me, I'm working as a research assistant at a small university in Svalbard, is just being able to, I mean, live in this incredible nature that maybe you can see behind me and uh, go out and investigate things every day and just kind of figure out what's going on in the landscape around me and how everything works, how it fits together and how, you know, how we're affecting it as humans. So. I'm pretty happy that uh, I got into science. My job these days is, most of my, my job is these days, is I write economic publications about the local and regional economy. And because I love numbers and because I love data, they usually have like number in the title, like the Inter-Island Ferry Authority by the numbers. The uh, Maritime Economy of Southeast Alaska, the uh, Southeast Alaska by the numbers. I even did a Juno Child Care by the numbers, but I don't have it in front of me. The STEM thing I'm doing now isn't really a competition or school-wide project. I do it in a game called Minecraft. It's kind of like a sandbox game, but what I'm doing is I'm getting all sorts of blocks and things I can build, and I'm trying to make contraptions like I built an elevator, I built a working pirate ship, I made a working airship. I'm doing all these things to kind of keep myself interested in stuff like robotics. Um, currently I work as an instructor at an elementary school after school program here in Fairbanks and I teach STEAM 
S-T-E-A-M, so the A is for art in addition to S-T-E-M. And I think it's really cool because I get to do everything I just described, so I get to collaborate, I get to use my imagination, and I get to explore an interdisciplinary way of looking at the world. And I think that's a lot of fun and really rewarding for the students as well, I hope. And soon I'm starting a museum educator position at the Museum of the North here in Fairbanks. Um, and I'm really looking forward to that, again, an, an opportunity for science education and outreach and getting to combine all my interests and find out more about the world and, you know, share what I've found out with other people. One thing I really enjoy about my science job as a geologist is being able to work out in the outdoors. Um, it's, it's a really fun environment to work in and usually have a fun crew of people to work with as well. And it's allowed me to see lots of the state that I wouldn't have been able to see, see otherwise. In a nation recently challenged by educational deficiencies in science and technology, engineering and math, I'm particularly pleased our interest is focused on STEM education. Because of the importance of these disciplines, I've co-sponsored the STEM Education for Global Economy Act. If passed, funds will be available to train teachers, develop and improve curricula, and incorporate STEM learning with other subjects. I've also introduced bills to help strengthen early childhood programs, tax credits for kids enrolled in quality pre-K programs, grants to businesses offering child care, and loan forgiveness to preschool teachers will all make the difference. Passage of the Appropriations Bill brought good news. One billion boost to Head Start, 150 million boost to child care block grants. You are among America's heroes. Please know your commitment to our youth and your efforts to inspire are appreciated. Together we can make sure early childhood education is a top priority and prepare our children to compete in the global economy. Thank you for all your outstanding work and for letting me join you today.